All right, here we are on another episode of the PML podcast today. I wanted to introduce my team to the millions of viewers out there that are watching us today. So first I will introduce you guys, and then we can talk about uh, how long you've been here, what you're all about, what you do, all that good stuff. So first we've got Cassie Fairburn. Hello. Rocco DePietro. Hello, everyone. Krista Schilling down in Tennessee. Hey. And, <laughs> hi. And, uh, and Kate Montero right here. Hello. Welcome, everyone. You guys seem very serious today. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just great to be here. Thanks for inviting us, Mike. <laughs> You're welcome, Rago. Um, so what I thought would be important is for everyone to kind of introduce themselves. Uh, let, let everyone know kind of how long you've been with the team and what your role is on the team. So for everyone out there who's watching, these, these four here are essentially uh, Team Comerford here. Work on all of the, the loans that we do together. Um, we work with buyers together from start to finish. Um, Cassie Rocco work on the front uh, as loan officers with me. And Krista and Kate are on the operations processing side and take it to closing. But we all work with the consumers. So um, why don't you just tell a little bit about yourself, how long you've been here, and all that good stuff, what you do, and yeah. so on and so forth. Yeah, so I have been here for about two years, going on two years. Is that um, it? This year, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I know it feels like a lifetime. Mm. Um, I started off as, yeah, exactly. Um, I started off as a processor for you directly. Um, and it was when I came in, it was Krista and I, um, and kind of just naturally evolved into the loan officer LOA type role to start and then got licensed. And I'm really like a a functioning loan officer here with team Comfort, the three of us. Yeah, you are. And it's been, uh, it's actually been really cool watching like the, the progression and, um, kind of transformation as, as we went along. Yeah. Um, because you were you were processing, you were really good at that. Then you decided, hey, I want to get licensed. I said, go for it. Uh, I think that was right around when you tried to quit, and then I didn't let you. Um, <laughs> and then uh, and then it's just just gotten better from there. Yes, it has. Right? It has. Happy to be here. Still. Right. And you weren't trying to quit because you were unhappy. <laughs> Correct. You thought there was some other good Correct. opportunity, but Correct. I told you it was not good. Well, and then yes. Here you are. Yeah. Right? Exactly. So yeah, here it's we awesome. are. You're a very valuable member of the team, and I appreciate oh, well, you very thank much. You. Thank and you. And I think we make a good team. So I agree. It's uh, it's great. All right, Rockefeller, tell the world all about you. All right, so I just graduated from UNH back in May. I started June 1st, and I've been here for about eight months now. I'm also an LOA slash loan officer like Cassie, kind of started out as the LOA role and kind of evolved into, you know, developing my own relationships and connections and just kind of, you know, being a full loan officer from, you know, the start start of the process to the finish. Yeah, you're absolutely a a loan officer. I would not characterize you as an LOA anymore. That was kind of where it, where it started. Um, Rocco actually was with us a couple years ago. Well, actually, what, three or four years ago, yeah, right? Yeah, probably three years ago. Over um, his winter break, he interned with us for, for a few weeks. I think I had him hang blinds and like <laughs> run to Home Depot or something. Um, but what was funny is we didn't even really know you at that time. You know what I mean? Because you were very quiet. And now you're not, which I like. You're a funny, funny kid, and you, you work hard, and you got a strong work ethic, and uh, and that's what it's all about. I mean, number one, that's that, that's like the baseline. What you need to have to be successful in anything is is hard work, be determined, not quit, and you've definitely got that. So you've been a very valuable member of the team. Appreciate so, that, Mike. Happy to have you here, buddy. Um, all right, Krista, fire away. Um, you quit too. Well, I started <laughs> as a processor on Mike's team back in June 2020. I can't really tell you how long I've been here because I took a little bit of a hiatus last year um, with some personal things. And um, so it took a few months off, uh, realized the grass isn't greener. And um, yeah, and so I've done everything from setup to processing to close. I have not gotten licensed yet. That is on my list, Mike. It is. Um, so that I can help with restructuring and um, doing all that fun stuff. So, yeah, it's been been great. Well, it's funny because all of you kind of like underestimate what you do and what you're all about. And then I'm going to tell you how awesome you are. But, um, Chris, the same thing with you. Like from, from day one when you came in here, it was like right away you wanted to do more. And yeah. that's what I... When I see people do that, I really see the potential in, in them and what they can do and the value they bring. Because that's like, to me, that's a, a very strong quality to have. You know, anybody can show up and just do the, the, the basics or the minimum requirement. It's when you're always trying to do more and be better and learn 
And you, you've done that from day one. Um, I mean, you're almost like obsessive about it, which I like. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like yeah. everything has to yeah. be perfect. You want to be better. And, and yeah. that really helps our team. And it, it makes it so that, you know, when we, we put in loans, because you're really the first person to, to touch it when we, when we put it in from the origination side to, to processing. And from the very beginning, if there's anything that any of us missed or anything that needs to be fixed, it's like you catch it right away. You even look I try at things, to. <laughs> I, I, it's awesome, though. I mean, you, you even say, and, you, and you're not licensed, but you'll even say to us, hey, might this program be better? You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. it's a, you're a very valuable asset. And although you, you, know, you took your sabbatical, we'll call it a sabbatical, um, <laughs> when, you, when you moved to Tennessee and you had some, some family stuff going on, so I, we, we, I totally understood that. Um, you know, I'm happy you're back and you're with the team and you will be for a long time, no matter where you're living. Right. Because <laughs> that may change. Who knows? Um, no. So we're very happy to have you. And I appreciate you, Krista. I really do. Yeah. I'm super happy to be back and on the Good. team for sure. Good. And now, Kate. And Tell me. us about you, Kate. <laughs> I'm the newest member to the team, but super excited to be here. I work alongside Krista as a processor, so I'm more on the operations side. Um, and fun fact, I used to work with Cass at my last job. So she trained me then. She's training me now. And Chris has been an awesome support too. Yeah, I mean you've been super valuable too. When, you know, since day one, you came in and you were learning things right away. You know, you're, what I what I really like about you is it seems like you're one of those types of people that doesn't make the same mistake twice. Like everybody makes mistakes, and that's totally cool. That's fine. It's, a, I mean, it's part of life. It's how you learn. But you don't. You haven't done it more than once, and I think you've only made a couple little tiny mistakes that aren't even significant. You know, so. Um, I'm super happy to have you on the team. I'm pumped to be here. Um, what I love about you, right? And I said this to Cassie one day. <laughs> what? I, uh, and at first, I was like, "I don't know what's going on with her," right? You know, like <laughs> you talk real slow and you're real, like laid back, right? And I'm like, "Does she fucking care about anything?" <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, "Yeah, well." Uh, and then I'm calm. like, "But, but then I learned. I'm like, no, no, she's like, on like, the ball. Yeah. It's just her like chilled out way of talking. Yeah. I really like it." Well, that's good. Yeah. yeah. No, I really no, do. No, Chad is even keeled. I yeah. feel like I've been in a lot of stressful jobs, and that's sort of like the way that I've kind of maneuvered through it. Yeah, and that's that's a very good mindset to have because nothing is worth stressing out about and derailing over. Yeah, it's really not like. Even, you know, if I get stressed out over things, whether it's a loan or this or that, it's like, yeah, you have that feeling, but then you just got to move move on. You know what I mean? Like, it's not worth letting it bug you out. Really, nothing is. It's like you need to look at it and say, okay, what's the, what is the solution? You know what I mean? I can't derail and worry about what happened. Well, I found, too, that, like, with working in customer service, like, you treating things like they're not a problem when you're talking to people, then they don't get all, like, freaked out and upset about it, too, so... Yeah, it's very true. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Again, that's like, you know, a law of attraction, the, 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 the vibes and the energy that you're, you're putting out, people are going to come back to you with that, that same type of feeling. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, if you, if you put out to someone, ah, oh, you know what I mean? Like, this is a terrible thing. I need a pay stub. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Then they're going to freak out. At the end of the day, you know, we're loaning people three, four, five hundred thousand dollars If we need a few pieces of paper, I think that's a reasonable request. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know what I mean? Um, so, Let's talk about goals and where we want to go with this thing. Yeah. Where do we want to go with this thing, Cassie? And what are your goals? To the moon. Oh, to the moon. Uh, beyond the moon. Isn't that what you said at our Christmas party? Did I? Yeah. The sky is not the limit. Space. Oh, I, <laughs> sounds like something I would say. Yes. Um, well, I mean, I remember when I came to you with my goals when I was a processor, and you were like, that's cute. Yeah. We're going to do more than that. Yeah. Um, I mean, Team Comfort, we're just going to take over the world, really, with the three of us. Yeah. yeah, I mean that that that's my plan. Yeah, you know what I mean. Is really yeah. really to to take over, and you know, to me, it's not about how much money we can make or how many you know, not even how many loans we can do. It's like I just want to win. I want us us to be the number one mortgage team around. I want to you know gobble up the market share. I want everybody to know that if you want to get if you want to get a loan done right, get it done fast. You come to us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. I want people to know Krista and Kate. And that's why I thought it was important that you guys are on this podcast today too, because all those the real estate agents out there and buyers and sellers and everyone yeah. else, it's important for them to know the whole team, right? Because you know Krista and Kate, you guys actually probably talk to the, the to the clients more than us once the loan is in process. 
we talked to him in the beginning when we we're putting a loan together and structuring it, structuring it, but then you guys take it from there to the end, you know? Um, so I think that's very, very important. Um, now, Rocco, Cass, what are we doing on the front end to go out there and gobble up some more business? What are we doing? You know, we're trying to get our faces in front of as many people as possible, um, business spotlights, agent spotlights. Um, personally, I've been trying to, you know, create some ex- um, relationships with realtors of my own, um, you know, besides, you know, people Mike has already met with or has an existing relationship with, which, you know, just kind of trying to do my part and uh, go above and, be- above and beyond and just bring in as much business as possible. Yeah, I mean, I think what, what you two are doing, which is fairly new, um, to you, new in the last like month, maybe month or two, mm-hmm. is uh, is going out and, and meeting with agents to bring in more business to the team, mm-hmm. you know. And um, I got to tell you, I'm very impressed with what you guys have both done in that short amount of time. Um, you've both got more balls than a lot of people that have been in this business for like 20 years. And I think it's because you, you don't have those those thoughts or worries to even be concerned with it. You're just doing exactly what I'm telling you to do. Yep. You know what I mean? And pick up the phone and, and calling people and saying, hey, let's get together so I can show you how you ca- I, we can help you grow your business. Because that's what it's all about, mm-hmm. right? And yeah, you talked about the media team and all that stuff we have. But, you know, it's that. That's, that's one value add we bring to the clients. But at the end of the day, it's because we're really, really good at doing loans. You know what I mean? And if we're really, really good at doing loans, that can allow them to focus their time on getting more buyers, getting more sellers, bringing deals together, not chasing the financing. And that's what so many agents have had to do. And you guys going out and talking to them and, and saying, hey, listen, this, this isn't just, I'm not just blowing smoke, I'm, I'm telling you the truth, right? And by continuing to do that, we'll bring in more business so that these two can really kick ass and get them closed in a week, two weeks, like it's happening all the time. Um, now, Krista, what would you say in the beginning, right? And this is more for, you know, the folks that are out there listening, whether it's real estate agents or end consumers. What is it that, you know, when we hand in a loan, what do you want to see from the, from the client that really makes it a nice, easy, smooth process? Yeah. I mean, I think just communication, I think that's probably the biggest thing I've personally bought, you know, three houses myself and have worked with different lenders during that transaction. I think like communication is probably one of the biggest complaints just overall, you know, making sure that we're communicating appropriately and clearly as to like what exactly we need. So I love when I get to talk to buyers who ask questions like, what does this mean? And and like, what's going to be happening now? And, and I think like where I kind of come in is I'm that little, that the fluff, right. Where I'm in that bridge between like the stress and, and the excitement where I'm like, look, like it's our job to worry for you. It's not your job to worry about what's going to happen. Like we'll get what we need to be, to be getting. So long as your communication is good and you're, you know, you're getting us the things that we're asking for and not questioning why every single time we're asking, we don't, it's not us asking, we're just the middleman. So I think that communication piece of like, look, we're just bridging the gap between who, you know, people funding the loan, the underwriters and you. So I think that that the communication piece is really good. And I love, I love helping people buy their first houses and all of that stuff. I just think it's super exciting. Um, So for me, that's the piece that, that I love breaking down a loan, figuring out what we need, getting it to the borrower and then being like, Hey, you know, this is pretty much all we need. Might need a couple more things, but we're pretty good. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. Communication is always everybody's uh, complaint out there in, you know, getting a mortgage land um, is that they didn't tell me what I needed or they came back to me a hundred times, right? One thing I will say to that is, you know, in some cases, you know, an underwriter reviewing a loan, you know, we might think we have everything in the beginning, but then they find something else that triggers a request for more things. But Krista, what you've been really good at is from the beginning, you know, after Cassie, Rocco, and I send in a loan, you'll look at that thing and you'll analyze it. Like you said, you'll break it down. And then you pick up the phone and you call the borrowers right away and you say, okay, I believe this is exactly what we're going to need to get your loan through underwriting as fast as possible, right? And that clear communication from the beginning, asking for almost, maybe in some cases, a little bit more than what we need, yeah. but that's good because then you won't have to go back to them again, you, you know? know? Right. So you're awesome at that. And I love the fact that, 
you always just pick up the phone, you know, and, and what I've seen from other, other lenders and other people in the business is a lot of times people are afraid to pick up the phone and just talk to someone, you know, and that's one thing you are certainly not afraid to do. And that's why you're, you're so good at, at your part on the front. Um, so you do your part, you scrub the loan, you get the documents in the beginning, you submit them into underwriting and that's when you pick up, right? I submit them into underwriting. Oh, so you're submitting yeah, them. So yeah, so I, yeah, I essentially I mean, do yeah, like a pass off to Kate. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so what I do is I, when I analyze a loan, like there are some things that I know that we're going to need that the borrower is not going to have right away. Sure. Like clearance of earnest money deposit, you know, we're not going to have title right away. We're not going to have. So what I do is I pass it on to Kate and be like, hey, I did request these from the borrower, but just keep in mind, these are the things that you're probably going to have come out of conditions. Um, just know I did request it. So you, if you just want to piggyback off my email, this is kind of where it's at. So in most of the time, Kate can attest to this, it's pretty accurate. I mean, there are like some instances where the underwriter comes up with something and I'm like, oh, didn't see that, you know, but for the most part, um, Kate will take it. She kind of familiarizes herself with it before she submits it. Yep. Okay. That's, that's right. I, I, I know that. I know that was a process. Um, <laughs> all right. So you're submitting them, right? And then, yeah. so, so Kate is the one that's communicating back and forth with mm -hmm. the underwriter. Mm -hmm. um, on average, how many times would you say that, you know, you're submitting the loan, getting it back out, submitting, getting it back out. So like touches with the underwriter back and forth. What do you think? Sure. I'd say probably on average about like two. Back yeah. And forth. I mean, that's yeah. absolutely incredible. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you, from my experience doing this for almost 20 years now, is what everybody's approach always was. And I think that's why we do so well, really as a company too, because I've set this up you know, company-wide with, with this kind of assembly line approach. Um, what so many people will do is they just take that loan with whatever they get from the borrowers, just send it into the underwriter, see what they say, go back, ask for some more stuff, see what they say, and go back and forth five, six times. And that's a waste of everybody's time. That's a waste of the processing team's time. It's a waste of the underwriter's time. It's a waste of the, the, the buyer's time, borrower's time. So the fact that you're hitting it two, at most maybe three times, yeah. is like lights out. And I'm telling you this because you don't know because you've only been here, <laughs> what, six months? Yeah, a few months. Right, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, not even. So like you, you, don't even, and you don't even know how good you guys are, which is really, really cool. Um, and, you know, in, in your communication with the underwriters, I've, I hear it. I sit 10 feet away from you is is spot on. Mm -hmm. um, so from from your perspective, what could people do, whether it's us, the buyers, the real estate agents, what could we do to make your part with the with the underwriting team a little bit easier, better or smoother? Hmm. That's tough. I mean, I think because just we're to, that good. Yeah, yeah, we are that good. <laughs> um, I think just to piggyback off of what Chris has said, communication is really like yep. the hugest thing, even with the underwriters and like having relationships with them, too. Yep. So that when you have those questions being newer, you don't I don't know every single condition that's going to come out there. So it's nice to have those relationships with the underwriters, too, where they can actually spend a few more minutes and like describe things to you and give right. you more reasonings as to why they might need something if we didn't anticipate it on the front end. Yeah. And that's what's great about having us having that designated you know, team of underwriters. Mm -hmm. It's not one of a million people. It's one of like, what yeah, is it, like, a few, like a handful, five, six, yeah. something like that. So you build that relationship. Yep. Um, the other thing I would like to kind of commend both of you guys on, on, on what you do here is you always pick up the phone. And, and these days, so many people get used to just the digital world of text and email and everything else. And I think in this business, what separates the you know good from really excellent is that the excellent pick up the phone and still talk to people. You know, explain to them what you need, why you need it. You know what I mean? Um, I agree with Krista. In some cases, we don't need a hundred whys. You know, we just need the four hundred one k statement. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but, but you know, you, you do pick up the phone and explain to them exactly what it is, and that's why we don't have mistakes in getting documents and getting things back to the underwriters and, and to the borrowers because you guys are very thorough and explain things clearly, which is awesome. We've even had people come in here and sign into their online banking with them to help them print out the statements. Yes, yeah. they had a. Not everybody is tech savvy with their computers, so we'll go above and beyond that way too. Yeah, and that's okay. You know what I mean? If you get somebody that's older, you know what I mean? Or somebody who's just not tech savvy. I mean, I know some people that are my age that, you know, would be like, I don't know how to do that. You know what I mean? Because um, I'm not older. Um, <laughs> I'm young. 
Um, so, you know what I mean? Like, like you said, going above and beyond. I mean, I walked in here one day and you guys were meeting with a borrower and his mom to like go through some documents and explain things. Mm -hmm. And like you do whatever we, we have to do to make it easy and smooth for people, you know, which is great. But we also don't let them off the hook. If we need things mm -hmm. by a deadline, yep. you guys get it in by that deadline, which is what we need because the concern, I mean, the priority rather, is to always get that loan moving, keep it moving forward, right? Let's keep progressing. And you guys do an awesome job at that. I think it's more of a consultative approach too, even yep. from the front end. It's not just, you know, we're putting your loan in and here's what it looks like. Here's a list of documents. Here's what a list of a process might look like. We're taking it from the front end. And, and analyzing it and saying, well, what's going to work best? Well, maybe we tweak it this way and kind of guiding them through mm -hmm. the process, I think. Um, and then the girls, Krista and Kate, on the back end, too, even just from a homeowner's insurance policy coming in high and them going, mm, from our experience, this looks a little high. Right. Maybe this is the range you want to be in. You know, we have some partners we can refer you to or, you know, kind of shop around for this, this quote in this range. I think it's more consultative than just paper pushing back and forth, which I think also kind of sets us apart too. I agree. And it's, it's funny because some of the things that, that kind of, you know, make us who we are and as good at this as we are, like I don't even think about sometimes. And like, yeah. that, that's a hundred percent yeah. true. Like we'll look at it and be like, oh, this seems off or that seems off and give people recommendations. Yep. And also, you know, and I'm not saying this just because we are the local lender and I want to do all the business around here. I've said that, but like, it's a big difference when you can come into an office and sit and talk to people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, these online banks, online lenders, first of all, they don't care about you, if, whether your house is going to, you know, close on time, if you're going to have somewhere to live. They don't care about the, the relationship with the real estate agents, the, the partners involved. We do. This is our, this is the community we live in. You know what I mean? We can't go around, like, you know, turning people down for loans three days before closing. We're going to see them in, in Shaw's or when you're getting a, a coffee. Or, you know what I mean? Like, and so we, one, we wouldn't do that. But two, we've got a relationship with the community. You know what I mean? So we want to make sure that everyone's always happy. Yeah. And I mean, even to take it one step back from before a deal even starts, sometimes it's just not the right time for someone to buy. That just kind of is what it is. But we're helping them through. All right. It's, you know, we're not just saying it's not the right time and hanging up the phone, never talking to them again and not telling Anybody who's involved, whether it's the real estate agent or a referral, um, you know, consulting with them to say, well, maybe this is what we need to do. Here's what the path looks like to get you there. Because it's not a no, it's when. Yeah. So I think mm -hmm. that's different too. the communication and the consultative approach from the beginning and then throughout the whole process once it is, you know, an actual loan and someone's found a home. Yeah, it's very true. And that's why real estate agents and, and other referral partners uh, have faith and confidence in us because... We're not saying, oh, no, they can't buy a house right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you just said, and that's spot on. It's not no. It's just not right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe in four or six months we'll have them ready to go, and then the team will be able to take it start to finish. Yep. The last thing you want to do ever, you know what I mean? I'm telling you guys this as like newer loan officers, but you know it already, is try to make something work that doesn't work because that's when, that's when the loan, the, the, the deal fell apart because of financing. It's because that never should have gone in in the first place. You know what I mean? Like that person never should have been pre-approved to buy a house right then because these two here can't make magic happen where there's 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 nothing to work with. Yep. You know what I mean? So, you know, we as a team, as I've taught you guys and all the other loan officers here, is we pre-approve people based on what they qualify for, what their doc, you know, all the documentation they send us up front, their credit, and let them know realistically what they can do. Pushing the limits never helps anyone, you know, um, because in the end, you, you might ruin relationships and you might put those people in a bad spot. Yep. So yep. it's all about doing what's right for the consumer, number one, never us. We're never trying to close a loan because we want to, you know, make money on a loan or whatever. That's just not our MO. Um, because by doing right by people in the long run, we'll just get more loans. And then these two can close more loans, right? All right, we're going to uh, have a little exercise here where everyone's going to tell something about themselves that nobody knows. Oh. Right? You guys or like a fun fact. Yeah, I was like, you guys don't know. <laughs> not nobody, not nobody, not nobody. <laughs> fun fact. This could get weird. Skeleton. Right? Right? <laughs> Weird's out. fine. <laughs> everybody knows me. Everyone knows I oh. fucking say weird things. Yeah. So, all right. Don't start Cassie. with me. I have to think. Okay. Rocco. Fun fact. I have... Three dogs and three sisters, or two sisters. I almost said three sisters. Oh. That would have been, would have been weird. 
<laughs> That's not that fun. What else you got? Um. I... Is hmm. that you do any weird tricks? Um. Not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> I only think about loans. I only think about loans. All right, All Kay, you got things. something. Well, I was going to talk about my dog, Finn, but then you said that was boring. Well, no. We have the same type of dog. We both have French Bulldogs. We do. Very nice. Um, French Bulldogs are a weird little <laughs> They are a weird little gremlin creature. creature. Mm-hmm. Um, they act like human beings. They 100% do. Yep. They're stubborn. They fart a lot. Does Finn <laughs> so, fart a lot? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Burps and snores. Oh, yeah. So gross, um, but so cute. <laughs> so cute. Endearing yep. at yep. the same so, time. So, okay. Um, what were you saying over there? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I'm just still trying to think. All right. All right. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Krista, give us a fun fact or something that is interesting that people should know about you. Uh, I was trying to, I mean, I have like a couple interesting facts. One of them was that I met Donald Trump when he was on a campaign, which is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Um, Regardless of how you feel about politics, I still, still cool. in the United States. So not many people could say that. Right. No, <laughs> totally. Well, um, the, the other thing was that I, you guys are probably going to be shocked, but I was in a junior Miss pageant in high school. Wow. You were? And, <laughs> right. Chris. And I, I won the talent portion of that. Well, With what talent? Doing what? I wrote a poem about running. Wow. I would predict. Do, you, <laughs> do you do you still have it somewhere? What? The poem? Do you have it? Yeah, I mean I do somewhere. <laughs> um I, I know my just parents pull it kept out. it, but I mean it's all on video too. Like I have the whole pageant on video. Oh, oh, wow. but, oh you're gonna have yeah. to send that to us. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. Uh, most most people are surprised to hear that I was in a pageant because that's just not me. Oh, yeah. No, I'm shocked. That's shocking. Um, I think it's pretty cool, though, you know. And uh, for those of you that don't know Krista, she is a fitness fucking maniac. She's a complete animal. Um, Tough as nails. You really are. Um, Yeah. Could be better. Oh, always. Always. (laughs) Could be better. Uh, I did did just get my level one certification over the weekend. So that was. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Good for you. Congratulations. Are you going to start coaching down there? I want to. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Krista, okay. full of fun facts, interesting yeah. things. <laughs> right now, we can't think of anything. Um, <laughs> did you come up with anything else, Raga? You're really thinking about it over there. I, I still have not. Okay. <laughs> I still have not. Well, that's okay. Rocco, you're young. You haven't had yeah. a whole lot of time to do You'll interesting find them. things. You'll find them. That's my excuse. You'll there. find them. All right. There's going to be some college stories or something. You got to have something yeah. good. Nothing UNH to share. UNH is a fun nothing, place. Nothing, nothing to, to share. share. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm sure we'll create some interesting things together, Rocco. Definitely, Um, Mike. Yes. All right. Um, Well, I love this team. I love you guys. I think that we're going to keep doing awesome things together. I need to interrupt and see what Cassie's um, fun fact or interesting fact is. So do you have something else to share now? Oh, I wait, mean, did you not go? I did not go. Yeah, see? We're going to skim over it. No, I... I mean, I can shake my eyes. Let's see. There's like, there's that. Oh my God, oh, that's okay. weird. <laughs> look, at, look at Dom in the camera. Zoom Ready, in. Dom? Ready? That oh, is boy. so weird. I've never seen well, that. Well, that's very before. interesting, fun, and crazy. That's the only um, thing we got going over here. And slightly terrifying. Um, so I'm glad I learned that today. You're welcome, everyone. Um, well, hopefully, everyone got to uh, enjoy getting to know the team a little bit better. Um, I can tell you guys. So. Over the last handful of years when I was kind of doing it mostly um, by myself on the origination side, um, we were ending up somewhere in the the top, usually like three-ish to four in the state, usually like top three. Um, Fuck all that. From now on, now that we've got this awesome team and we've got you two, you know, I think that we should definitely be number one um, now that we're doing it with a team and it's not just, just me doing the origination um, so we're going to commit to being number one this year. So everyone out there, this team is going to be the number one mortgage origination team in the state of New Hampshire for 2022, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, and 30 beyond. Right. Um, that's what I commit to. And I will do everything I can to give you guys all the tools to get there. Um, I'm going to do everything I can. Uh, Ed and I have been talking a lot. 
through YouTube, TikTok, social media, everything to grow our brand, grow the company. I'm going to go out and meet with uh, real estate agencies to try to get in there as you know their their preferred lenders. I'm going to do everything to make this team and this company be the number one mortgage lending force in not just New Hampshire. I mean, us, I just want to start there, but in at least New England, right? Right now, we're licensed in Maine, uh, Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Florida. I want to expand to Connecticut and Rhode Island soon. Um, we'll probably stay out of Vermont just because it's tricky lending and there's like 10 or 15 houses in Vermont. Um, so, um, so that's what we're going to do. That's the plan. So thank you guys all for being on. Krista, it's lovely seeing your, your face. Oh, other interesting fact is that she only got dressed on the top half. <laughs> on the bottom half, she is still wearing her gym shorts. Stand up. Wow. Show the crowd. Yes. <laughs> I did Pat- shower. I did shower. I just Good. put clean gym shorts back on. Good job. Good job. So pageant on the top. CrossFit on the bottom, right? Yeah. Thank you guys. Everyone have an awesome day. Let's get back to our clients and helping people. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. Let's keep kicking ass. Bye-bye. Bye.